the first hit and you're addicted. What's up everyone, it's your favorite blind chick back on your screen with another one. I wanted to switch it up for 30 days of blind. So in this one, I'm gonna be sharing with you my Sephora sale recommendations. I usually do the sale haul, but seeing as we're going through a panorama, I figured it'd be a little tone deaf to be like, this is what I got. If you still wanna see that I did a mini one in my blog, just letting you know it's out there. But I figured this year would be better to do recommendations seeing as I click these more often than not over the hauls nowadays anyway. So if you're like me, you probably want to know what's tried, what's tested, what's true versus what's new and trending. So I hope that you guys enjoy this video and let's get into it. How should we do this? Let's go from head to toe. I figured that's the easiest way to go, but then I don't got much for the... That's just a saying, you know. All right, so first things first is the Diva Curl Styling Cream. This is something that I've been purchasing a lot over the years. I started this channel on a quest for the perfect curly hair product. I still haven't found that yet, can't lie, but this comes very, very close. I was looking for a one-stop shop back in the day, the one product that does it all, moisturizes, styles, defrizz, de-poof, de-everything. Really good for not just a wash day, but if you're doing a flexi rod set, a finger coiling, finger twisting, any type of curl product, any type of curl pattern situation, this has got you covered. It's super moisturizing, which I need because my hair is dry AF. Speaking of dry AF, another product that I'm in love with, it came out about two months ago, is the Oliplex Number no. 8 Bond Mask. I am obsessed with hair masks. In fact, anytime I condition my hair, nine times out of 10, I'm conditioning with a mask because my hair really needs it. I've been dyeing my hair for 15 years. In fact, this is the first time and the longest time I've gone without dyeing it. This is the closest to my natural hair color I've been, thanks to this panorama we're in. And my hair has been really going through it since salons are still closed and I'm overdue for cut. But after using this, my hair has never felt so soft and so manageable. I was like, what? sorcery is this my hair is softer than when i get my treatments done in the salon so i mean for the price point if it's gonna feel like that is worth it i got three picks for skincare if you watch my channel you already know i'm skincare obsessed surprisingly this mask maniac doesn't have any masks this year i've kind of gotten over the masks even though i was obsessed for years i just find serums work better especially with the skin i've been dealing with my first recommendation for you is no surprise to any of you who've watched my channel for any amount of time fresh soy face cleanser this is the holy grail of holy grails if you want something that's going to do it all it gets rid of your eye makeup without irritating your eyes it can get rid of your makeup as well as just wash your face on a regular day i only ever wear foundation when i'm filming with you guys other than that i go bare face i just like it that way but i use this on the daily i'm obsessed i even had to tell myself that once i'm done this bottle i have to try something different because i've been using this for six years straight and i'm sure there's been great face washes that have been on the market in the last six years. If there's something you love, recommend it down below, but I keep coming back to this whenever I get a sample. It's like nothing compares. It's not the best at makeup removal, but it is really good. I usually have to do two washes with this, but on a regular day when I'm bare face, this is so good for getting everything out of my face without irritating it. If you got sensitive skin, this is gonna be a game changer. I do not have sensitive skin, but it is so gentle, gentle enough to use on your eyes, like directly on your eyes. And because I'm so lazy, I just don't want to do the most to take my mascara off. I just rub it, let it sit while I'm in the shower and then wash it off and it's good to go. Another product I need to wean myself on because the obsession is real is the Dr. Dennis Growth Ferulic and Retinol Acid. I first bought this six years ago, not even knowing the wonderful world of retinol and how much it would change my life. The first bottle I used was the best bottle. It was like crack. Is crack the one where it's first hit? That's I don't, I don't know drugs like that, but I just know that if this was a drug, this would be a drug. The first hit and you're addicted. This made my skin glow like no other. As I mentioned before, there's been a time that I would buy way more skincare than I like to admit from Sephora. And as much as it worked initially, usually it didn't work at the end of it or after the second bottle or whatever. This is probably my fourth or fifth bottle and it still works really well. The only reason why I wanna stop using it is because I wanna try other serums on the market, but I already know I'm gonna be buying this again very soon, especially since we're probably looking at about a month or two left worth of this. I think it's about a quarter left, but that's gonna last a long time. I was a little bit apprehensive to share this one since this is the newest addition to the collection. 
This is the Glow Recipe Watermelon Niacinamide Dew Drops. That's a lot. These titles always get me. I love the way this makes my skin feel. I can't speak much to the radiance because I think most of my radiance is still coming from the retinol. Also, I haven't been using it for that long. I can't even lie to you guys. This is one of the newer things that I've tried. I got it during the sale. Beyond the brows. So how do you do your brows when you're blind? With this pencil, precisely my brows by Benefit. I did a whole tutorial on my brow routine if you wanna check it out. It's linked over here and down below. This is my everything. I love the Brow Wiz by Anastasia too. I find this is just, it's just better. I can't, I can't explain it. Maybe it's the finer tip. Maybe it's the spoolie that's kind of sharp and digs into your hairs. Whatever it is, it's just, this is it. This is my everything, especially since I'm visually impaired. I know that I'm doing a good job when I can't see the hair like strokes. That's how fine it is. But I can tell that my brows are getting darker. And if I take a picture, I'm like, okay, then it's done. <laughs> it's good. Just as a security measure, I brush it before and after to blend it well, because sometimes I'd be doing the most and not even being able to tell. But I highly recommend this, whether you're visually impaired or not, because this is gonna take your brow game to another level. There is only one eyeliner that I've been buying since the beginning of time, maybe the land before time. It is the Urban Decay 24 seven liner pencil. I never hear anyone talk about this, but this is an oldie, but a goodie. I've been using this for 15 years, not this exact color, but the very first thing I ever purchased from Sephora other than blush when it first came to Canada was a kit of 24 seven liner pencils. I had asked the associate, I wanna get into color, but I'm not ready for eyeshadow, what do you recommend? And then she recommended a case of five different colored pencils, and I've just been obsessed with how these glide on so seamlessly, especially as, I mean, back then I had perfect vision, and I don't know what Stargirl's disease was, but this has really helped me throughout my blind journey to be able to still do my eye line, my water line, my whatever line, and keep everything looking tight and right. These two, <laughs> it's kind of funny for me to recommend foundations to you seeing as I hate wearing foundations. I only ever put them on to film for you, but here goes. This is the Makeup Forever HD. I've been using this for years. Literally, this is my sixth bottle, which six bottle in what, eight years is not that much. I usually go through a bottle a year take it or leave it because I don't wear it every day. But this, if I do ever wear it to a wedding, an event where I want my face to sit right, this is what I use. And of course you can tell me, I'm not wearing it today, I'm wearing this one, but anytime I've ever filmed in the past, this is what's been on my face. So I've been keeping it together for a couple of years. It's definitely Blind Girl certified, easy to blend. You can build it up if you want. I would say it starts off medium coverage and you can make it full. I never try to do the most. I'm not a cake monster over here, but it's really good if you wanna look flawless on the camera or at an event. This one is the W370. It's a little darker than that one, but I'm hoping I can catch a tan if I get out and get some more sun during the spring. This is the Givenchy Prism Libre Foundation. It's pretty new. I haven't had this for a month. I absolutely love the feel of this foundation because I can't feel it. One of my qualms, I love that word, with foundation is that it sits on the face. I just don't like things that sit on my face. Where is it? I can't feel it. It's literally a cloud. And it almost is tempting me to wear foundation just because it's so lightweight, but I, I, I kind of like seeing my face and knowing, oh, there's a pimple coming up. I don't know, it's a weird thing. I've always been like, I want people to see my real skin. If I do the most on Instagram and then you see me in real life, you're gonna be like, oh, she doesn't look like that. So I feel like that about foundation too. I mean, it's just a me thing. So I'm not judging anyone who lives for or wears foundation every day. But personally, I just wanna share my real skin. If I'm having a bad skin day, I have to live with it. If I'm having a good skin day, I can glow on. This is airbrush perfection. I love the packaging. It's not that expensive for Givenchy. Ha, ha, ha. It's actually a pretty good price point, especially when you get it during the sale. Honorary mention is the super expensive Giorgio Armani. That one is out of this world. That, that foundation is from another universe. The lips, the lips. So I have the Neige Sleeping Mask. I never thought there'd come a day when I'd be obsessed with this because when I first did my review for you a couple years ago, I'm like, meh. It's good at best, but now that I know that you need to apply a lot to get the true effect, I realize this is the best thing in life. Honestly, they give you a lot for a reason because you're supposed to slather it on before you go to sleep. Since I've been working from home a lot, the whole remote working thing, my air is so dry in my apartment that I've been applying this throughout the day as my basic, basic 
very basic lip balm. I just figure since we're wearing masks that cover our mouths anyways, there's no point in buying lip colors, lipsticks, liquid lipsticks, all the things I used to love buying. So I just doubled up on these because these are the things that I've been grabbing the most that have been changing the game. Moving on to mascara. These are a good substitute for eyelash extensions since I can't get those done either. This is the Pat McGrath Dark Star, which is so good for lengthening. It's worth every penny when you get it on sale. I would never buy this full price. And then this is the Lancome Idol, which has the Wicked Wand. I'm sure you can find a wand like this at a drugstore mascara, but something about this formulation. It does a divine job of not only lengthening your lashes, I have it on this eye and I have this on this eye, just for a point of reference. But both of them are really good for lengthening and expanding. My lashes are short and stubby and they tend to clump whenever I put anything on it. So I need a mascara that's gonna be really good at lengthening without having them tangle and fight each other. On top of that, this one is really good with the wand to push like a push-up bra. On top of that, this one is extremely good for feathering out your lashes, especially when you can't see them. I use the 10 Asks Magnifying Mirror, which I'll show you in an upcoming video when I do a Get Ready With Me but sometimes my lashes look like tarantulas because I can't see that I'm just brushing them all types of ways. So at least this gets them feathered out in a more cat-like way. This looks so nasty, yo. Why does this look so gross? Okay, so the story behind this is it didn't come in this bottle. This is a Muji spray bottle, but the bottle, it came in broke because it dropped 99,000 times. And the last time was the last time for the last time. This is the Fenty Beauty What It Do setting spray, which is unparalleled to any other setting spray. This is my everything, which is why I had to salvage the solution in this container. It is so good and I wish I still had the bottle because the mister part is where it's really at. It's the lightest, it literally feels like an experience. Not only that, it really sets your makeup in. So if you're wearing a mask, I tend not to, but the times I have left my house with my face still on, if I spritz it with this, it doesn't apply or transfer as much as it would had I just gone out with a setting powder or another spray. So this is where it's at. There are two tools that I wanna share with you. The first is the Hourglass Foundation Brush. I've had this for years, and out of all the brushes I've had and used, this takes the cake. When you cannot see your face, you wanna make sure you're blending it as best as you can. And I know I don't have to double check or wonder with this because it's so dense and it's never shed it on me. I've never lost as much of a hair. Every time I wash it, I'm just like, what sorcery is this? But whenever I use this, I just buffer it out. And I've never used the matching stick, by the way, so I don't know how it works with that. But with creams, it's so good for a seamless application. Another blind hack is using a beauty blender, but having it a little wetter than you might have. The additional water is really good for making sure that you dilute the foundation that you might end up not applying evenly because you can't see. But when it's a little wetter, you can apply it more evenly and kind of water down some of the thicker parts. So I'll talk about that more and show you in the blind get ready with me. But these two tools, I know this is expensive for a sponge, but something about the OG, I've tried a whole bunch of the knockoff ones. They're good for what they are, but if you wanna see the difference, you definitely wanna stock up on some beauty blenders during this time. Finishing off with fragrance. I have this one which I got last year during the VIB sale. This is the Killian Rolling in Love. The bottle, ooh, something about red. The smell. If heaven had a smell, I am telling you. I have a little bit of an obsession with fragrances. If you want to see my full perfume picks and collection, you can click over here. This is one of the newer editions and it was a treat for me. Something about a fragrance takes your look, your appeal, your aura, your aesthetic, your everything to another level. And I mean, if you want to treat yourself, if this is a one thing you get, because last year I think this was one of three things that I actually kept because I have a bad habit. Let me know if you're the same, but I'd be buying everything from the Sephora, then I'll try it and I'd be like, mm, I don't know about this and I'll send it back, I don't care. But this is something that I do not regret. I hope to cherish it, I keep it in the box so that it doesn't go fast because I find fragrances turn so quick on me. I don't know if it's because my apartment is hot or I just have bad luck, but I'm trying to preserve this to the last drop. I also tend to stock up on travel size perfumes, not just because I wanna try something new, but because they all turn on me so fast, it's better to get a small sized anyways. This is the Clean Aquia Neroli, hope I'm pronouncing that right. Anytime I wear this, I get compliments. It's just, no words, it's so, 
It's so good. It's just, for a girl who talks a lot, it takes the words and the breath away. This one over here, I've been using a lot because it's not as potent. I have to spray this whenever I've just lotioned my body so the emollients can help bind this to my body. This is the Killian Princess, which has matcha and green tea. There's nothing like this on this planet. This is such a unique smell to me and I love it. I just wish it smelled stronger. Between this Killian and this Killian, I feel like they're completely different companies and I highly recommend if you wanna treat yourself to anything, better than a lip product or an eyeshadow palette is a scent. I know the world is locked down and you're probably like, where are you wearing perfumes to the grocery store? Yeah, hello, I wear perfumes as part of the whole package. Those are all the things that I would recommend for this upcoming Sephora VIB sale. I think I'm gonna switch off from doing the hauls because I just, I don't know, I feel like it's tone deaf this time. So I, I definitely wanna hear what you were planning to get. We're already midway through the sale, so I think it's ending this weekend. So you can let me know what you've gotten or what what you're planning to get down below if you haven't already thumbs up share subscribe until next time love and later